Hi everyone! Today we're going to go through this monthly spreadsheet planner or Google Sheets calendar, Google Sheets planner, whatever you want to call it. It's been in my shop for some time and so this video is long overdue so let's get right into it. The first question you might want to ask is uh, can I not just use a Google Calendar? Of course you can. That is completely up to you. Will it have the same perks and features as this spreadsheet planner? Uh, most likely not, but we will get to that. What this spreadsheet has is actually some tools that you might want to find helpful. As we all know, where focus goes, energy flows. So you might appreciate the, the time management or the time tracker tool that is built in this calendar and it helps you see how you distribute your time basically where your focus goes or where you need to shift your focus to in order to achieve your goals for example uh, it also contains a habit tracker it also contains uh, weekly and daily checklists and a meal planner very basic one but it, there's a meal planner goal planning and a task tracker without further ado let's jump right into it i will just zoom it in a little bit and we'll go to the setup page the setup is really easy as you can see here as it's written here in these instructions uh, you set it up in these four cells or these four areas rather uh, today is October 19th, so I am going to choose, as per these instructions here, October 1st year. It is to ensure that all the calendars in the spreadsheet and the daily planner part and everywhere will work the best, because they will work the best if you choose the first day of the month. You can choose the current date if you want, but they will work and, and display the best if you choose the first day of the month you start. You can start any month, it's completely up to you. The, the calendar, the, the spreadsheet will update itself. I would like my week to start with Sunday, so I'll choose Sunday here. And this is the hour you want your daily schedule or your, your daily planner to start at. 5.30 a.m. is a little too early for me, so I'm going to choose, let's say 7.30 a.m. works better for me. And these are activity categories that you can edit, of course, uh, that you will use on the daily planner part. In a digital planner, you would most likely use stickers. So think of these as stickers or tags that will actually help you categorize your activity. And then for the task or the time management part, the time tracker part, you will see in, in what categories or what areas your focus goes the most, basically, where you spend the most time. Uh, so here you, you simply just delete whatever is in there and you retype your own category. I'm not going to do that because I'm happy with it as it is. The other parts of the spreadsheet, we'll get to them later. So let's start with the monthly tab or the monthly sheet. So here, as you can see, it updated automatically based on what we set it up for. So it's set up for October right now. Week starts with Sunday. Current date is uh, October 19th. It's highlighted in this purple-ish color. And this part, uh, this monthly planner, you would probably use for uh, activities or events that take a bit more time than just a couple of hours. So let's say I have vacation planned between October 22nd and 28th. I will merge these cells. I will type in vacation and I'll just do a bit of formatting here. I would like to the text to be in the middle, maybe bold, and perhaps I will assign the cells some really nice color, which would only mean that all this weekend I will be packing for the trip. And again, some nice formatting, so it looks nice and clean uh, color, maybe this one. And here I can also put in birthdays. Uh, let's say it's my mom's birthday. Here, top priorities, can I think of one? It's October, so I'll probably need to change tires on my car. And if you check off the checkbox, see what happens here. Let me zoom in actually, so you can see it better. Here you go, it crosses out the, the text. 
Let's go back to 100% here. Checklist would be a uh, pick up cake for birthday. And again, if you check off the checkbox, the strike through uh, will appear over the text. Of course, you have room for notes. For example, I don't know, the garage closes at 3 p.m., which is important for me because I may not be able to get out of work before three, so I might have to uh, take a half day off or something like that. You will notice that uh, you will have six weeks here as well as six weeks here in these sheets. It is because some months, depending on when they start or what day the first day falls on, they might stretch out to up to six weeks. If the first day of the month is on Saturday, and the month has 31 days, it may go up to six weeks, basically stretch out to six weeks. Uh, so this is the reason why you have six weeks here and here. And also, if you notice these, this te text here is underlined and it indicates a hyperlink. Just like in a digital planner, you would have hyperlinks to take you to the respective part of the planner. This one has the same thing. Uh, you can also use the sheets here. Obviously, you click on it and you, boom, you're in week one. And you can also click on the hyperlink here, boom, you're in week one. Again, you will have a tiny calendar in the top left corner on in every sheet in every of every week. And that is because it will show you what week you're editing, basically. So we're in the first week of October, uh, October 1st till October 7th, uh, the week start date updated here as well. The current date is highlighted again in the same color. And I am editing this week that is highlighted in the light brown color. Again, here you have hyperlinks. So if you need to quickly jump into week five, let's say you can just do that by clicking on it. Let's go back to week one though. Of course you can set up main goals for the week here. Uh, for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to name them goal one, goal two, and goal three. And again, they will be crossed over if you check off the checkbox. Let me zoom back out. Again, you have a weekly checklist of tasks that you need to do again. Just to speed things up, I'm going to name them, name them task one, task two, and so on. And you can assign priority to them like high, medium, or low. Notes and for groceries and meals, we'll get to it in just a few moments. So my schedule, as you can see, starts at 7.30, which is what I set up in the setup tab here, 7.30 and 7.30. Uh, this is a box for daily gratitude. You can change it into whatever you want. Uh, you can just leave it blank if you want, or you can type in the main thing that you really need to do on that day, or just uh, put in highlights of that day if you want. And here we go. So at 7.30, I want to just get up early, even though I know it's not too early for most of you, I would say. 8.30, I will have coffee with a friend. I'm just keeping it very general. So I will call this personal time. It will probably last for a good two hours, let's say. So I will just drag the cells down. At 11.30, this is not my actual schedule, by the way. I will have a yoga class. And this is, ooh, what would we call it? Leisure, maybe? Self-care. Self-care sounds better for this. Self-care, again, uh, one hour. And let's see what happens here at the end of the week, all the way to the right. This donut chart is already starting to fill up really nicely. So you spend most of, the, your, your, most of my time, I spend... On, on personal uh, affairs and self-care to 37.5%. This is the breakdown of the hours here. And of course, if you keep on filling out more and more entries into your schedule, the donut chart 
will update. And not only you will have the weekly overview right here, you will also have the daily breakdown of how you spend your time right here. So the more categories you add, uh, let's just put an errand here. And see, this graph will also update. Of course, you will have your daily checklist with priority tags, and you can also assign categories to them. And the categories are the same as um, the categories for the daily schedule part. And you have a very basic meal planner, which um, has two slots for each meal of the day. So breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snack. They have two slots each, so you can plan two meals or maybe the main dish and side dish. Since you're planning meals, you might also think of groceries that you might need for the week. So you can uh, start your grocery list right here as well. In the same fashion, you fill out the rest of the month. And let's get to the habit tracker part. Uh, this is already pre-filled as you can see, but let's uh, delete this first one, for example. So I'll highlight all of these cells and hit space twice and it erases all the checkboxes. Again, you will choose the first day of the month that you start tracking your habits. So in this case, it will be again, October. So I'm selecting October 1st and I wanna drink eight glasses of water a day. And I did that on October 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, didn't do it on October 5th and so on. Here, if you're not sure if October 8th was uh, what day it was, basically you can check here the little tiny calendar, it was uh, Sunday. So my overall stats for all the uh, habits that I've put in, by the way, if you have an empty cell, if you didn't put in any text, it will ignore that. It means it knows that you don't have any habit planned, basically. So my overall progress is 9%, which by looking at the calendar, it really makes sense. Uh, let's see what happens if I actually do all of them daily. Well, 100%. And if I start taking out some, you see how all the graphs adjust and recalculate. When you select the first month, when you start tracking your habits, all of the calendars below will update. Sunday start is pulled automatically from the setup tab. And here you go. This is your habit tracker that is good for 12 months. You might be thinking, okay, I might have events that will happen uh, farther in the future. I'm going to attend this event in November and I need to take a note of that. You can do so in this pre-plan sheet. So here you choose the date, um, the first day of the date, or you can choose any date if you want. If you want the pre-plan period to start in December, you can choose December, or you can simply, uh, there's a function here, you can delete the function and just type in the day you want. But as it's set up now by default, when you choose the first date here, uh, let's say I'll change this to December, everything will update automatically. You will have up to four weeks to pre-plan. Once you have cleared your calendar for the new month, you can then take this, Control or Command C and Control or Command V and paste them into your daily schedule. As you can see, I'm not able to do it because it's still October. I would have to clear the entire schedule or in the entire calendar. And I will show you how to do it uh, right now. You can, of course, go into your daily schedule as well as your monthly planner and just highlight the cells and hit delete and it will reset everything. Or you can go to this setup page and click on this clear planner button. When you purchase the template, it's not pre-coded because you need to allow third party apps to do so. And I didn't want to sell it with you having to allow third party apps if you don't want to do that. 
you have more info about that written here so you can read through it. You can always go through the calendar and just hit delete on the cells that you want to delete. Or if you do not mind allowing third party apps, uh, I have written a script. If you click on the planner and I have assigned the script to it, you have to contact me if you want the script to be assigned. This little pop up window will pop up <laughs> and say this will clear all data in the planner. Are you sure you want to continue? And I want to continue. And uh, within a few seconds, it took like two seconds, it finished the script already. It cleared everything here, unchecked all checkboxes, delete all entries here, even here. The only thing it cannot do is to uh, go to default format for the cells. So what you can do is just highlight the cells that you like the format to be transferred to other cells and you just drag them up. Same here. These, this is the format that I would like to see everywhere here. So I just drag it up. Boom. It's all clear. Let's go to the daily part. Daily part is cleared. No entries here, here, no entries here. Oh, did I forget something? Uh, I hope not. Oh, of course I did forget something. I also have an annual version of this. Uh, so you don't have to pre-plan and delete uh, the month every single time a new month begins. I will link both uh, down below underneath the video. So just scroll down if you want to see the annual version, which has all this. This is it is it is the same design, except it has all 12 months and everything else is pretty much the same. You can start any time, any month. And it will update itself and add up to those 12 months. Uh, if you like to keep things simple and, or if you're just starting out with uh, spreadsheet templates, I would recommend you probably opt for this monthly version so you get a costume to how spreadsheets work and what you need to do, what click, uh, what cells to click in or how to delete entries and stuff like that. Uh, and uh, I will also do a video on the annual version. The annual version doesn't have that clear button because you can then make a, a new copy of the planner basically and it will be blank. So uh, there's no need for the button. I hope I've shed some light on uh, how this time management calendar spreadsheet planner works. And uh, if you have any questions, I'm always here. I'll be happy to answer them or even make a video if you want me to. And yeah, that's it. Have a great day.